Hi, my name is José Zvedo, and uh, I am very happy here to present my sessions on this amazing virtual event, DynamicsCon, um, that, as you can see on the screen, is driven by the community for the community. So, as I said, uh, my name is José Zvedo, uh, and my session is all about how to sync master data uh, if you are using Business Central with Power Automate. And all this session and all the goal of this session is not to use code. So it's a no-code solution. So I will start to give an introduction of myself. Um, at this moment, I am working in KPMG UK. Um, I am solution architect. And as you can see, before COVID, I was based in London. But after COVID, with these strange times and difficult times, for a lot of people, I would say that I am based on Microsoft Teams. On the left, you can see my, my, my contacts, so my email address, direct email address, my LinkedIn profile. That is the most common way that I, I, I share some con content with the community. And I also run uh, on, the last, on the last six, nine months a personal blog that the main the main content and the main message is all about simple solutions simple tips without code looking for my experience so since i left university i start to work in it all the time on the erp space and um, as you can see, I already work with different ERPs. So my first project was with Sage X3 after a small project with Oracle applications. And finally, I moved to the Microsoft Dynamics stack. And on the last 16 years, I work uh, in different roles with Business Central. Uh, as you know, it was before NAV, but after, with the name change, it becomes um, Business Central. Um, before before I start my career in Portugal, I am Portuguese, but I decide to have an international experience, so I decide to move to London two years ago. Um, and And before moving to London, I also run some lessons in university as a teacher, uh, precisely on the Dynamics uh, Business Central. During these 20 years, of course, that I, I work on different roles, all the time in consulting, all the time on this part of the channel, helping customers. And I start as business consultant, and after progressing as uh, PM, program management manager, engagement leader, um, I have a, a small experience to move from Porto, that is my my hometown, to Lisbon. And when I moved to Lisbon, Lisbon, I was the team leader of uh, an amazing team there. Uh, and after I decide to come back to Porto and move for more for the pre-sales. And sell side of of this uh, of this type of work, so I became product manager and solution architect. During the last twenty years, um, of course, that we work on the customers that we won, but uh, uh, most of the time we had a big focus on these industries, fashion, food, and pharmaceuticals, and I work in several complex. Uh, business central implementations of this area, both on retail and manufacturing. So I, 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 I work on food retail, food manufacturing and fashion, all that type of different companies. Um, we, also, we also work a lot with the service companies. 
and 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 to give you some some personal touch i am uh, really a uh, food wine and gin lover is one of the things that uh, besides um uh, the professional side i like very much and and i i, I am also considered as a, a sports person i like to run i like to walk big walking walker walkings um, i already made eight ways to santiago in spain and when there is good waves and when there is good weather i i i also like to bodyboard as you can see on the left um, I, i i spend a lot of time in my career to try to get knowledge about all the microsoft stack and you can see on the left some logos so i am a microsoft certified trainer i am an expert on uh, azure solutions as architect and i also have some certifications about the power platform so after this introduction i will explain the agenda and it is very simple and we'll explain the main topics of this presentation so i would suggest to to give my personal perspective about uh, business central and uh, since microsoft bought a uh, navision company a lot is going on and i have a personal perspective about the latest version and i want to share with you and after i will go um directly to the topic of this session that is to sync master data and i will explain what is the challenge and what is the most common possible approach so during my experience i already have this challenge several times i already discuss internally and with the customer several times this and uh, and uh, with the new microsoft stack i think that is uh, is another option that is the disruptive approach that i will share with you of course that the next step is to show the step by step of this approach like a show and tell mode and after uh, as always on the techy techy side of the projects there is no always everything very easy and so i want to share my lessons learned so there are big benefits but there are also some learns that we should take care and after of course that i will be open for the questions and answers so moving forward this is my personal perspective of business central so some time ago all starts with uh, a solution that it was called navision after when microsoft bought this company after some 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 time decides to rename to microsoft dynamics nav and after we we saw different logos different versions a lot going down and this is the last logo and when we look for the community when we look for most of the partners they are really experts on this and they are really uh, focus only on this product and i am not saying that this is bad because it is very good if you are expert but my experience on the last years is that we as a partner should have a different look for this so this is the last slide and the last picture that we often see microsoft repeating again and again and even if we saw some presentation some keynotes from from the leadership of microsoft we see this picture a lot of times and my perspective from a partner for business central is this one so we are not looking anymore just for this part of the business central that is only one logo here 
we have a lot more to offer to our customers. So it is connected with the office, it is connected with Azure, and most important, it is connected with the Power Platform. So it's all about Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and, and even, even virtual agents. So um, I think that even as a partner, if we are experts on Business Central, we should offer and we should look for the big advantage of offering this together. And my session is precisely to look how Power Platform can help Dynamics Business Central customers to this topic of the, the, the sync of the master data in Business Central. So, coming precisely to the topic of this session, the challenge itself. So, a lot of times we know that uh, Business Central is multi-company, is a solution that supports more than one company, and it is often to see that we have a group of companies that works together, and of course that the multi-company that is inside Business Central as a good match for these requirements. The challenge starts when this group of companies starts needs to share some of the master data and some of the master of the information. And I have here some examples like the chart of accounts or the dimensions or the posting groups or the items, and in some cases, even the customers, the vendors, and as you can imagine, if you, we are talking about 10 fiscal companies or 20, if they want to share these master data, it's not very nice that you need to create a customer 20 times on different companies. So the requirement usually is, is there any chance that I create this master data in one company and we have an automation that flows this data to the rest of the companies, usually the challenge is this one. And as you can see, sometimes we have this flow inside the same database. If all the fiscal companies are inside the same country and localization, but in some cases we are talking about multinationals and some of the companies are based on in one country and others in other countries. And in that case, with Business Central, we need a different database, but the, the requirements still be the same. So, on the right, I list here the common approach and the options that are most common use for this challenge. So, the option one, of course, that looking for business central standard, we do not have a solution for this. And the first reaction is why we do not create a customization or extension to enable this automation. And this is the first reaction. And a lot of times we can see that most of the dynamic partners choose this option because they have the knowledge and they have the resource available um, to make this customization. And, and it is comfortable because you do not need to change anything in terms of your way of working. You have the developers, you have the knowledge, you build some days to the end customers. And uh, so this seems to be the right option. And we can see that a lot of times we create this customization and we solve the problem. But we know that with the new world, with the evergreen uh, model of Microsoft, we should not create a lot of customization if there is an option to use the standard. There is a second option. Of course, that we are not the only ones that has this requirement. And because of that, there is already out there some ISV solution with this functionality. So we must onboard the solution and, and after we can use without creating something that is specific for the customer 
and it is very very driven for that precise requirement um a lot of times um these solution are under the name the umbrella name of intercompany um and there is a lot of out there and third there is a technical um a technical option that a lot of partners does not know but table by table in business central there is a property that the name is data per company that by default is all the time with yes and if we design and we access to this property on the master tables that we want to share the data with all the companies we can change this property to no and that means that in this case we can have only one list of customers for all the companies and this option can be nice for some specific scenarios so this guarantees that when you change that table is changed for all the fiscal companies so there is not even uh, a synchronization uh, in, under the hood um that is good uh, on the cons we are we know that this option is only available in business central on prem so if you try to apply this solution on the SaaS version is not is not available there so there is here a limitation and the other con is really that this option is only available if you are using the same database so for that scenario that i explained that you are a multinational and you are running different fiscal companies with different localization that means that you need different databases and in that case these properties per database so does not work on that scenario but this is this is my personal view about the way that i saw a lot of partners uh, trying to address this challenge so the approach that i will show and tell and i want to challenge all the community to start to think this way is really if again we do not look only for this small box here of dynamics business central but if we look for everything that is offered by microsoft business solutions uh, apps we can use something that is here and can help without creating a footprint in business central and allowing to use this this challenge and to have the same output and what i will explain on the next slides is really to use the power automate because as you you might know this solution was called a flow some time ago now it is power automate and as it says on the name it's to automate some flows and to to sync some master data is about automation so every time that you create something on a one database you want to flow on the other on the same way and this is all about automation so when we have this uh, this challenge the last time uh, from a prospect we spent some time to explore the power automate and this is the solution that i will present on the next slides so i will jump now for for the solution itself and now what you can see on the screen is really business central on SaaS version and as you can see i have here a list of customers and on this tab i have the power automate solution so 
just to give you uh, some initial information to the ones that are not very familiar with the Power Automate solution. So first, the Power Automate is a SaaS solution. So you do not need to install anything on-prem. You do not need to install anything on your laptop to use. You just need to have an Office 365 account and after you can start using. So the start of using and the start of the try is very easy because it's plug and play, I would say. Of course, that you need to know how to, 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 to play with it. And, and on this solution, on the Power Automate, you have the ability to, 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 to create some automations always connecting with some source, always connecting with some data source of different solutions. So I already click here before, because to be honest with you, when we click on this option of connections, a lot of times these take some seconds to open. And as you can see, we have here several options. So that means that the Power Automate can be connected with OneDrive, with Forms, CDS, Dynamics 365, and as you can see here, we also have Business Central. And we also have a lot more Gmail, um, directly SQL if we need. So we have a lot of options. But today is all about connecting Power Automate with Business Central. And as you can see, I already have the connection here. We can see that is already connected. So of course, that the first time that you create a new connection, it will request user password and things like that to guarantee that this user is able to connect. Um, but after that is a, a process that is very straightforward. So after having this, I will jump to the option of my flows. And as you can see here on this, on this environment and on this user, I have already some, uh, some solutions that I try, some flows, and I will explain the ones that, not this click, sorry, but this one, the solution that I want to show to you. So, as you can see, this flow is all about every time that you create a new customer in Business Central Coronos, it will create that customer on Microsoft Business Solution Company. So I will explain now this flow um, click by click um, because it's a three steps flow and it's very easy to understand. So, as you can see, the first option that I would say that is the real trigger is when a record is created on this environment and on this company, on this table, and as you can see, we have here some tables that are related with Business Central. So accounts, bank accounts, company information. We have a lot of options here. And as you can, you can see, I select the customer. So this is the trigger. I have a second option that is really a virtual step to guarantee that on the next one that I will explain later, we are able to map field by field. And this is a get record. So it's a fixed way of getting all the records of the customer. And again, we just need to select the, the source of the, the environment, the source company, the same table, and just get the row ID. And finally, the third step is really if this happen every time that there is a new record in the customer table on this environment on this company please create 
a new record on the same environment, but can be another on this company on the tape customer. So very easy is like uh, if if this happens, this is the result. And as you can see, we have different fields here that is field by field the customer table, and we can decide when this record will be created. For example, the number, we want the same number. If it is the display name, we want the display name. And this is available here because we have this get record step. So if I go here, for example, for this field, as you can see, this field is a Boolean. You just need to select yes or no. Uh, but if you go to the next one, you can select what is the dynamic content and you can select the text area ID, like this one. And finally, just save. And test. And this test is really to guarantee that this logic can be applied. If we have, for example, a if on the wrong order, or if we have something that is inconsistent, this will raise something. So this test is really about the rule that we implement here on Power Automate. So after this, I will go back. And I will explain something. So this is the, the, the flow. As you can see, the, each flow can be on or off. All of these are off. Because when you turn on internally, this engine is always working and always looking if there is something to trigger and to be applied. Um, I already received the question, how often this trigger is run? And I do not have an answer for that. I can assure you that on normal situation, the Power Automate run every few seconds. But in some cases, as it is a SaaS solution, I already need to wait in some cases, um, some minutes. But usually, uh, the solution is run automatically without any setup every few seconds. So let's try it. So create a new customer on the source company, the Kronos one. The, as you might know, the number is automatic. So new sync customer for dynamics con. Simple like this. So I will not populate the, the rest of the fields. And it's just to create a, a small example. So as you can, you, as you saw, on the Power Automate, we create a new record on the customer table, so the trigger must be applied. So if we look, here it is. So we are on the same database, on the different company. As you can see here, we are on Kronos. Here, it is the same tenant, but a different company. And we already have here the new customer. So just to show you that this database has these two companies, but it will work the same way if we have a different database. And, and uh, of course, that we have two connectors, but it will work the same way. So this is the step-by-step -step is very straightforward and it's very easy. So I decide on this presentation to select the customer table to show this step-by-step. -step, but as you saw, we can decide if it is 
vendors, if it is accounts, GL accounts, or something else. And this is a solution without code. So as you can see here on this detail, we do not need, sorry, not this click, but this one. Um, we do not need really to have technical knowledge about AL or something that is low level code um, because this is straightforward. So coming back to our slides, uh, because I can imagine that after this presentation, some of you want to know the step by step. I have a slide for everything that I show and tell on the real solution. So before starting to prepare opening Business Central on the source company, on the destiny company, and having the Power Automate. After, of course, that we need to create the Business Central connectors. This is the second step. After, we need to create the flow. And I show here the examples that I show to you. So to show that we have a three steps when a record is created, the get record and the automation of the creation. And finally, as I, I, I explained to you, we need to save the flow and we need to test. And when there is times that this flow is not running, we have an option that we can verify the run history because sometimes the trigger is not is applicable but it was not run so we have this option on power automate to verify it if it was run or not so now i want to share with you my lessons learned about this topic so as i said on the beginning we are not uh, talking about something that is uh, uh, very old. This is new. And, and there is some lessons learned that we face. We work around it, but I want to share with the community um, all my lessons learned. So I have here a topic, um, a list of the topics that I want to share with all of you. So. Business Central is part of the business app stack. As I said on the beginning, we should not focus only on the business central, only on the AL, but we have a lot more solutions to discover and to explore and to offer to our customers. As I said, I also said the Power Automate is completely SaaS. So that means that you do not need to install. And to be honest, this solution connected with Business Central is not completely, completely stable. So sometimes the, 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 the seconds that we are waiting to trigger is not seconds, we need to wait some minutes. So I, would, I, would, I want to share this with you because this is the reality and my experience. Um, a lot of times I receive this question, what is the real difference between the Power Automate and the Logic App? And when I have this conversation with the Microsoft guys, they were very clear that Power Automate is a user-friendly Logic App. So that means that under the hood, we are talking about the same engine. But there is difference to apply or to use Power Automate or Logic Apps. The Business Central connector is still in preview. So if we are talking about something for a live environment, a production environment, very demanding, maybe we should realize that this is in preview and we should raise this to our customers. Um, for the ones that want to repeat this solution on the on-prem business central, I, it is possible first. Second, the steps as some more to do is not so straightforward, but I already published on my personal blog 
um, something that has the step-by-step -step for the on-prem. So you have here the link, please visit, please comment. And it has all about the on-prem version of this solution. Um, on the big advantage, on my perspective, this solution is very cost effective and the footprint in Business Central is minimal, is almost zero. And in this case, because all the solutions is all about power automate, the connectors, and you do not change the, the, the direct Business Central. I recommend that this solution is should not be applicable for something that is very high scalable. So when we are talking about a lot of records or a lot of fiscal companies, in that case, we should use Logic App and not Power Automate. This is good for simple things that we can run at the end of the day, few records, maybe very often, but not with a lot of records. But if it is something very scalable, we this is not the, the best option. Please do not use this approach uh, for transactions, like intercompany transactions or consolidation for that part of transaction. This is not with this solution. So this solution, in my opinion, is for master data and not for transaction for two reasons. First, there is already something about intercompany transactions and consolidations. And second, we will become a, a solution that needs a lot of records. And if it is that the case, as I said before, the best option is logic apps and not Power Automate. And finally, oh, on these difficult times for all of us, Please stay safe and give it, give it a try. Automate yourself. So this solution is free to try. Why not? If you have the skills on Business Central, why not create a user in Power Automate and give a try? Because for some cases, it can simplify and we can, we can use it. And finally, Thank you very much for having me on this session. So I repeat again my contacts here. So I am more than happy to work with the community. So you have my direct direct email, you have my LinkedIn profile and I and also my personal blog. And I, I, I want to give a special word for Dynamic DynamicsCon uh, for organizing this and for the invitation to present um, this solution to all the community. A big thank you for, for them and, and, and for all the community. So feel free to keep in touch with my contacts and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much.